recently read City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert, and I absolutely loved it. It's about showgirls in New York in the 1940s, and being both a fan of and a composer of musical theater, this was totally up my alley. The book is a historical fiction, and during it, the theater company rallies to put on their biggest new show yet, which is also called City of Girls. So this is my copy of the book, and there are post-it notes hanging out all over, because when I read it, I found myself dying to see the musical they put on, which of course doesn't actually exist, so I decided to write it. So first I went through the novel making notes of every single thing that Liz Gilbert mentions about the show. Every song title, every snippet of scene, every lyric segment, and every newspaper review so that I could try to recreate it as accurately as possible. My collaborator Pete White and I co-wrote all the music and the lyrics except for the direct quotes that we harvested from the book itself. So direct quotes you will see on the screen in purple. So we wrote seven songs from the show and then we recorded them together live in our studio. Also, I don't consider myself an actress, but in the middle of a pandemic, I was the only option. So please imagine all the sequins and the tap dancing. And everyone go read City of Girls and in the meantime, enjoy the show. The show begins with Mrs. Alabaster, who's a spunky aristocrat in New York in 1929. For years, she'd been in a loveless but strategic marriage with Arthur, who called himself a stockbroker but was easily taken advantage of. Mrs. Alabaster often saved the day with her resourcefulness and knack for savvy opportunism. The curtains open on the day after Arthur has been killed in a freak accident. Act 1, Scene 1. Mrs. Alabaster is at a tea party with a few other opulent ladies. Amidst the general chatter of idle gossip, she casually mentions that her husband was hit by a car the night before. The ladies all gasp in shock, and one of them asks, Critical, my dear? Always, replies Mrs. Alabaster. There's a long beat. The ladies stare at her in arch confusion. Mrs. Alabaster stirs her tea calmly with one pinky raised. Then she looks up in purest innocence. I'm sorry, did you mean his condition? Oh, he's dead. No need to mourn old Arthur, my dears. When I cry, they're crocodile tears. But he's left me with a dilemma. I've been dealt from a rotten deck. A call came in quite early here from our regretful financier. The money's been gone since October, and the mortgage is overdue. I've heard of bleak rock bottom. First hand, it's worse, I know. We'll be wards of the state by autumn. There is one way now to go, so I can only go up from here. Yes, I can only go up. Arthur's not like savvy men are. Trusted any broker cigar, just as well that he's gone to St. Peter. He'll have much better luck up there. Once with some big business he froze. I said I'll help the deal to close. Had the Masons right over for dinner. And I baked the prize-winning pie. Of course there's pain and sorrow. Yet it's ever so slightly grand. When I think about tomorrow. Just like that, I've won the hand. And I can only go up from here. Yes, I can only go up. She can only go up from here. Yes, she can only go up. Disaster, disaster for Mrs. Alabaster. It smashed her, harassed her. Now she is poor as a pasta. Disaster, I can only go Disaster. This is Alabaster. Oh, I can only go. I smashed her. I can only go. Harassed her. I can only go. Now she's poor as a pasta. Oh, I can only go. She can only go. The scene changes to Mrs. Alabaster's garage, where her mechanic, Lucky Bobby, is shining the car and admiring himself in the reflection. He's suave, hopelessly good-looking, and well aware of the effect his confidence has on others, though he wasn't born to money. He always has managed to find himself amid a series of money-making ventures, some legal and some not so much. 
But though he was unafraid of bending the rules, underneath his hunky exterior, he's warm-hearted and loving. Ain't short a muscle Been known to eat all my spinach Time for a hustle I always catch a lucky break Girls like the stubble I'm not shy if she's with a fella And if there's trouble I always catch a lucky break in summertime when days are nice A fella likes to roll his dice And if his baby dolls a bore He likes to roll a little more Silk tie and jacket From some guy I took to the cleaners Might be a racket I always catch a lucky Folks are muttering about the market crash Out of their minds and an out of cash But I won't be no patsy fool I'm high, white, and handsome and I'm playing it cool Dough in my pocket Burns a hole and I've got to spend it Don't let it shock you Catch a lucky break Lucky break I don't get caught up thinking piece of cake I'll find a fist of Lincoln's my fair shake And I'm ready for the next bonanza Waiting for my windfall Cause I'm always catch a Catch a lucky break. Mrs. Alabaster enters the garage, reluctant to tell Lucky Bobby that because her husband lost all their money in the stock market crash, she's going to have to let him go and sell everything she has, including her beloved, beautiful mansion. Lucky Bobby sees an opportunity and tells Mrs. Alabaster that she has all she needs to make the money back, and then some. She's curious and becomes enraptured as Lucky Bobby describes how simple it would be to turn her mansion into a profitable speakeasy and bordello. But my father taught me never to lie, cheat, or steal, says Mrs. Alabaster. So did mine, Lucky Bobby puts his hand over his heart. My pops taught me that a man's honor is all he's got in this world, unless you get a chance for the big score, and then it's okay to fleece your brother and sell your sister to a whorehouse. But only if it were a quality whorehouse, one hopes, says Mrs. M Alabaster. You and me come from the same kind of people, lady, says Lucky Bobby, and they launch into their duet. Oh, it's masterly. <laughs> Dastardly. Bastardly. Masterly, dastardly, bastardly ways. It's morally blurry, but Bobby, it pays. It's time we cash in on the speakeasy craze. Our masterly, dastardly, bastardly ways. Plenty of room for a crowd. Hope neighbors don't mind it loud. What would I do without you? I'll get the plate so oh, it's, it's more, more fun with two. Perhaps in the kitchen and whole cabarets. I'll move the table if you move the chaise. The cat has to go, but the chandelier stays. Our masterly, masterly dastardly, dastardly, bastardly ways. Within the letter of the law, there is the tiniest flaw. Bend it to make a little room. Gambling and gambling and girls with perfume. Five on the dot, we'll have fine canapes. Dinners at midnight and breakfast buffets. They'll come for an evening and gamble for days. Our masterly, dastardly, bastardly ways.
not about a dog. Yes, that's a lucky phrase. Showgirls at seven and new bats amazed. Drown them in whiskey and shower them with praise. We'll give them a ball, Bobby. We'll take a raise. Our masterly, dastardly, alabasterly ways. Bastardly ways. The plan is a massive success, apart from the handsome but well-respected mayor, who has his suspicions about what may be going on at the Alabaster place. Mrs. Alabaster has become an expert at hiding the illegality under the guise of a widow in mourning, but has inconveniently developed a liking for the mayor. Meanwhile, at the bordello, one girl in particular is having great success. Daisy, a dazzling showgirl who has a body that won't quit, is provocative but still untarnished by the world. She dreams of family life, even during this show-stopping strip tease. I may look like a girl that's put together with fancy fringe and feathers designed. Mrs. Alabaster's mansion, intent on shutting down the illegal gambling operation and bordello she is reputed to now be running. He comes in disguise, but Lucky Bobby is on to him and gives warning. The showgirls quickly put on maids' costumes over their spangled leotards. The croupiers pretend to be visiting the mansion for a garden tour, and lace tablecloths are thrown over the gambling tables. Mrs. Alabaster invites the mayor to join her for a pot of tea in the solarium, discreetly dropping a stack of gambling chips down her bodice in the process. You've got yourself a pretty high-grade house here, Mrs. Alabaster, says the mayor, while peering around the place, looking for signs of illegal activity. 
Real fancy-like. Did your family come over on the Mayflower or something? Dear me, no, says Mrs. Alabaster in her highest tone accent while fanning herself elegantly with a deck of poker cards. My family always had their own boats. There's undoubtedly a spark between the two of them, and after the mayor leaves, Mrs. Alabaster is left alone with her thoughts. I've been so Of success, and Mrs. Alabaster not only has made a fine income, but is enjoying business ownership. Lucky Bobby has made a hefty sum with his share of the profits and has fallen head over heels in love with Daisy. The two plan to settle down in Yonkers together and start their own speakeasy and family. A little spot in Yonkers. We'll tie the knot in Yonkers. I've always thought of Yonkers. We'll love, love a lot of Yonkers. Yonkers. The perfect plot is Yonkers. What if you're caught in Yonkers? No, I will not. It's Yonkers. Oh. Out of your shot. In Yonkers. La da 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 I'm so Yonkers for you. We'll blow the lot in Yonkers. Don't need a yacht in Yonkers. Not Montserrat, it's Yonkers. Hit the jackpot in Yonkers We'll have a tot in Yonkers Grow old and rot in Yonkers What if we fought in Yonkers? You're all I've got and Yonkers La da 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 La da 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 Young 
Yonkers. My land's a lot in Yonkers. Yes, all we want is Yonkers. A little spot in Yonkers. Of course, in the end, all's well that ends well. Mrs. Alabaster decides to come clean to the mayor as well as tell him how she feels. Much to her delight, he feels the same way and instead of shutting her down, decides to join her in running the speakeasy. With everyone happily coupled up, they come together for a final toast and celebration. Single is fine, dear, but two is a gas. Make ours a double, now pass me the glass. Let's make ours a double, show me that you care. Let's make ours a double, let's decide to share. Sin babies, gin babies, come right on in babies, come pull up a chair. Let's make ours a double, let's become a pair. Kings go with queenies, and lamps are best with genies, and olives have martinis, my dear. Atoms need their Eevees, birds fly with beezies, Eevees come with GBs, it's clear. Foods go together like coffee and donut, peaches and cream are fine on their own, but let's make ours a double, show me that you care. Let's make ours a double, let's decide to share. Skip ladies, dip ladies, give them the slip ladies, partners everywhere. Let's make ours a double, let's become a pair. A restaurant would shudder, serving bread without its butter, the patrons would mutter faux pas. All actors eat at Sardi's, the laurels need their hearties, pineapple Bacardi's, hurrah! Mrs. Alabaster enters the garage. No. 